Let's get warmed up here and see if this thing works finally. We are on and we are live. On the first ever Valley of the Fun podcast. I have a rival podcast. Friends back home coming at me. Sounds like they're already sponsored by Lowe's. That's that's big news. Guys, what a disaster last week's podcast was. We had nine minutes recorded and only four minutes you could actually use. It was fuzzy. I don't even know if this is recording properly. Uh, the technical side of the podcast game is a, a lot more difficult and challenging than I first anticipated, but we're going to power through it. We're going to get through it. Uh, and this is uh, episode eight. Welcome. I'm your host, Sean Nickel, coming at you with Valley of the Sunday Scaries, episode eight. Um, what a weekend slash week. My parents were in town, which was awesome. Basically, every project that I've had to complete for this home is now completed. We finally officially moved into Phoenix in my mind. Uh, it was awesome to have them here both together at the same time. My dad's an absolute monster when it comes to fixing things. He did not pass down that gene to me, uh, but uh, excited nonetheless to have everything done in the home. So I will definitely recap and go over what we talked about in episode seven, just because as of the playing of this, there's like seven people total that watched it. Like I said, I didn't promote it. I didn't put it out there. It was a disaster, but I wanted to make sure at least did it. Uh, but uh, hopefully we learn from it, and this time we will uh, we'll be in a better spot, that's for sure. All right, so let's kick things off with the story that essentially inspired Episode 7. So Episode 7, the name of the episode is Insta-Famous. And what happened was my wife and I were... Um, basically hiking in Sedona, which is in Phoenix, uh, amazing views. And we went on a trail called the Devil's Bridge, which is a pretty crazy name for a trail. It's four miles long. And what you do is you climb to get to the very top. At the very top is a rock structure that forms what looks to be a bridge. Uh, and as we're going up there, there was a, a couple, a man and a woman, they were arguing. And I didn't know why they're arguing, but by the time we got to them, they were, the, the man was like, I'm not going to wait an hour uh, to take a photo to be Instagram famous for five seconds. And, and they just kind of continued on past us. And I didn't really know what was going on. But when I got to the top uh, with my wife and we saw Devil's Bridge, I looked to the right of it and there was like a hundred people in line to go out on the bridge and take a photo of themselves out there to say they kind of did the trip. And it kind of clicked. The very first thing I looked at when I saw that was like, oh man, like I, I can get some some serious likes from this photo. And I, I realized that that's kind of how my brain works now. Like uh, I'm taking these photos and capturing these moments and memories more for the likes I'm getting from other people than, you know, for me actually enjoying the the moments themselves and so that was kind of the, the whole point of episode seven uh, essentially I, I we didn't end up taking a photo we didn't wait in line the line was like an hour long and so christine and i just kind of sat down and we just watched people walk across the bridge and we took it all in and i used the phrase uh using your eyeballs instead of your iphone which i thought was pretty important and uh and again disclaimer i'm not telling you like some boomer to never use your phones or never use technology that's not the point of this but the point is just to be super aware of why you're trying trying to capture a moment. Is it for you or is it for social media? And just being aware of the fact that we're connected to our phones at any, any given moment. So that's kind of the, the, the recap, if you will, of episode seven um, in a nutshell. My mom is still here and um, she pulled up a chair and she's currently watching me uh, from my house do this podcast like a parent at a sporting event, which I'm finding to be a little bizarre and uh, a little distracting. But that's my mother and you got to love her for it. All right, on to episode eight, baby. Time to talk about chasing your passions. Uh, for a while during my quarter life crisis, I thought a lot about what I was passionate about because, you know, just like everyone says, you know, uh, chase your passions or uh, do what makes you happy. And I think for a very small subgroup of people, the people that are, you know, music producers or they're painters or they like cars um, or they're like cooking, like, it's easy to kind of design a career around those things. But I think for a lot of people like myself, I'm not exactly sure what I'm passionate about. I'm not exactly sure what I like about what I do on a day-to-day -day basis when it comes to working. And so that's kind of what this is all about. For a lot of people, they are just stuck. And I'll kind of explain what I mean. All right, hopefully you can hear this because the planes are back, the birds are back, which is a good thing if you can hear this, that means my microphone's working again. If you can't hear this and I'm talking to myself, this is all for nothing anyway. 
All right, so being stuck, oh, that, that had a little carry over there. So being stuck leads to major problems and rash decisions, basically. If you feel stuck in your current role, um, a, a, a lot of people are going to stay in that current role forever, and they're going to be miserable, and they're going to hate every second of it, and then 40 years are going to go by, and they're going to have a lot of regret. And on the other side of the extreme, there are the people that, you know, they feel stuck in their current role, so they just quit, and they decide to chase their passion without any plan. Both ends of that extreme are, are very dangerous, and they don't really normally lead um, to what people are looking for. For instance, if you, you quit your role to chase your passions, and you find out pretty quickly that, you know, even though you're doing something in a different field or something that you're maybe more passionate about, um, you're not as, as happy as you thought you would be, and then you end up you know, not having a job and not having any money. So it's kind of tough. So instead, I'm going to challenge everybody to find the things that they're passionate about in their current roles first. Do a deep dive and think about what you love to do and then just focus on doing that to a very high level in your current role and anything you don't like doing, if possible, just try and delegate it to somebody else. There's a study in a book that I'm just now finishing about uh, janitors who worked at a hospital who had incredibly high engagement and uh, employee satisfaction levels. And they talked about the fact that even though they were doing, you know, janitor role work, what they loved about their job was the small talk with the patients um, and for them to be cleaning because they know that that directly impacts, you know, the, the happiness level of the patients in the hospital. So they took a lot of pride when the, you know, the reports would come out of, you know, how cleanly is, is the hospital and, and when patients score that high, they took a lot of pride in that, you know, they felt like they had a direct impact on people who are currently in the hospital for whatever reason and through their conversations and things like that they, they were helping uh, and that was providing value and so you know they might not be in the roles that they see themselves in long term but they took the things they're passionate about in those roles and really applied that and so I would challenge each and every one of you to do the same thing with your current role but uh, let's say that you can't find something that you're truly passionate about in your current role like what do you do do you just quit do you just keep moving on through it um, I have some advice for you as well before you do something drastic like quit when you know without a plan try and figure out what it is that you like to do and find a way to find a role within your current company that allows you to do that now that's a lot easier when you work for a really large company like I do but even in the smaller companies out there I'd be willing to bet that if you're a good person and a good employee that you would be able to find a role that suits the things that you want to do and your company would be more open to you taking that on versus bringing on someone completely new so if you can't find the things you're truly passionate about right now, I just suggest you find something in your current role uh, or your current company that allows you to have a role that will allow you to be passionate about what you do. Because you think about how many years you work and how much time you spend at work. If you're not you know, happy, or the word I like to use instead is fulfilled, uh, it, it's just so much harder to get out of bed every single day and enjoy what you're doing for the majority of your life, especially if you're just doing it to chase a paycheck. Now, sometimes taking a new role might involve you taking a pay cut and you have to decide if it's worth you, you know, you being happier to take a pay cut. And sometimes there is no pay cut and sometimes it's a pay raise to do what you want to do. So you got to really explore all of those options. But before making any moves like externally, I would just challenge you to really try matching your passions right now to your current role and see if that is something that you find more happiness and more fulfillment in every single day. And if that's the case, then great. And if not, you know, you got to get out or start planning on what to do to get out. So if you're like me, you've definitely heard the phrase, uh, chase your passions, do what you love, uh, to an ad nauseum. And for every story out there, for someone who chased their passions, you know, it, that was a huge success. There's thousands of other people that did the exact same thing just to find that, you know, just because they're doing something else that maybe they're a little more passionate about, they weren't still, um, you know, feeling good about their current role. But I hope that this kind of helps, you know, navigate those muddy waters on how to maybe approach your role a little bit differently. I I think everyone wants to be happy, but I think deep down everyone actually wants to be fulfilled. I mean, happiness is an emotion and it comes and it goes, but fulfillment, and I looked at the actual definition of it, um, it's more important to me because it's, you know, being fulfilled means fully developing one's abilities, which means you are doing what you are meant to be doing. You're fulfilled. You feel good every single day. And that might not be something you're always happy in, but you are always fulfilled, which is super important. So that's my two cents on everything. I really hope that this recorded the first time. If it didn't, I'll be out later on today. Uh, but uh, as I said to my mom and my dad, as they got off the, uh, the airplane at 1 a.m. a couple nights ago, welcome to the Valley of the Sun.